Hey guys, it's C. Kenna here. Um, long time no see. Uh, in this video, I am going to be sharing with you all my final health update. Um, I am going to be discussing what's happening with Fluyo, as well as the fact that I'm looking for someone to take over my channel as a co-host. So let's hop into bed and uh, let's discuss everything because it's much easier for me to do so while lying down. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so, let me tell you about my last few months. In my last update, I told you how my health took a nosedive starting at the beginning of this year. However, I also mentioned... That being said, I'm still hopeful. I still have a, you know, just a mad scientist amount of different treatments and stuff that I'm, I'm really keen on getting to. This is the tale of that plan. You see, over the last years, I've done so much research on my condition, which is post-viral dysautonomia with POTS. What does that mean? Simply put, I got a virus, likely COVID, and it made the part of my nervous system that controls things automatically go haywire. Meaning simple things like exposure to cold and heat, walking, running, exerting myself mentally or physically, getting refreshing sleep, don't work right. That said, I had a plan. For the last year or so, on and off, I've secretly been learning German. Why? Well, because Germany kicks ass when it comes to dysautonomia research, and I wanted to go to Germany. So I toiled, I put in the work, and I have learned a but I will a video über mein Deutsch vielleicht später machen. And so I geared up to go to Germany and to do an experimental treatment called plasmapheresis. That was last year. Now the treatment could have potentially cured me, but unfortunately, it didn't work. But das ist mir egal. We move on. What is next? Well, there was a very promising clinical trial in Germany for a drug in development that I was waiting years to try. So I learned more German because I had to. And I emailed the clinic back and forth for months trying to get in. Und eigentlich, finally, I got invited to go. And then they ghosted me. But you know who didn't ghost me? A different clinic running the same trial in Spain. E pues, vamos a España, muchachos. So, in March earlier this year, my fiancé Brenda, my assistant Maxime, and I went on an adventure to Spain. We had to take an RV, of course, because I couldn't fly there, and the trip was extremely hard on my sickly, quasi 90-year-old body. However, we were on a quest for a cure. So I toughed it out, and we finally made it to Madrid. And so, I went to the intake appointment. The doctor was simpatico, the hospital was bueno, and I used my rusty Spanish during the whole appointment, which was required to participate. Aquí tú hablas español. Esto es un programa en español. Aquí se habla español. Aquí nosotros no ponemos letrerito. From there, I had my blood taken to see if I have the biomarkers that was needed for the trial, and if I did, I could pass to the next stage where I actually received the medicine. So that was part one, mission accomplished. So after that, we went to Calpe to wait out the results for the next two weeks. It was a beautiful place to wait anxiously for results. Brenda and I had some fun. Mussels from Brussels. <laughs> and it was important for me to see the beach because I hadn't for four years and I figured I might not again for a very long time. I really staked everything on this trial working. Even most of the money in my personal bank account. Hell, I even learned a language or two to participate. This was my last chance for a cure in the near future and our hopes were up. And so, when the news came on that second Friday in Kalp, it was devastating to say the least. I didn't have the biomarkers that they were looking for. I could not participate in the trial. I will not try the drug. And instead of the drug, I got another $15,000 down the drain, a trip that destroyed my already feeble body, and a road trip of 17 hours to get back to Brussels with our heads hanging in defeat. Scheiße. And that brings us to the current moment, three months, there you go, three, three months later. So how am I now? Well, as you can assume by the way I'm shooting this video, not great. The whole ordeal of the trip destroyed my body for months, and finally now, on August 30th, which is actually, ironically, it's my birthday today, um, I am finally feeling as good as I did before I took the trip, which is still not great. 
However, this whole trip and this whole ordeal gave me a lot of clarity. This was my best chance to get better anytime soon and it didn't happen, which means I need to change things up and prepare to be this sick or a little bit worse or a little better for the next few years. Specifically, I needed to make two big decisions. What do I do with my upcoming language learning app, Fluio? And also, what do I do with my YouTube channel? Well, for Fluio, I already made that decision a while ago. I decided to replace myself as CEO and to bring on someone to run the day-to-day -day operations of the company. This decision, tough as it may have been, was one of the best decisions I have ever made in my entire life. Because, and a little drum roll please, I am happy to announce that while my body is not getting better, it is no longer getting worse. Because finally, after years and years of working on Fluio, I am no longer overwhelming myself at work, and I'm finally going at my own pace. And damn, it feels good. It feels good. Although, I wish I could work more. That said, this will be my final health update and I will go over that in a little bit. But yeah, Fluyo is now thriving and the energy change between me holding on to operations by a single thread and bringing someone on who's new, fresh, hungry, ambitious, and actually able to dedicate the required 60 hours a week to being CEO of Fluyo, well, it is night and day and he is killing it. And I'm personally thriving where I do best, which is behind the scenes, company strategy, and ensuring product standards. And Fluyo as an app and as a team is doing better than it's ever have before. And I'm super proud. In fact, we just launched our closed beta a few months ago and the feedback, fire. The app, stunning. The community, buzzing. The Fluyo team, glowing. And it's finally coming out in a few months. So sign up so you're notified the second it gets released. All that good stuff being said about Fluyo, the only one thing that still stresses me out, which happens with all startups, is funding. We have done an amazing job stretching all that Kickstarter money that we received from you guys uh, to get to our launch date, but we're running out of funds and it's one of these things where if we launch and we have a successful launch, we'll be good. But if we don't, we're going to be very strapped for cash. So we are thinking about reaching out to investors. And also we're even experimenting with the idea of opening up Fluyo to investment, not just from normal investors, but from the entire community as a whole. Uh, there's this thing called equity crowdfunding, which allows the community to actually get shares in uh, you know, a startup company, but it remains to be seen whether or not there's enough interest for this sort of thing. So if you are interested in potentially investing in Fluyo and actually getting shares, um, I'm going to be linking a Google form in the description of this video. So if you are interested, fill that out. Uh, and if we have enough interest, I think it's something that we could and probably should do because why just give Fluyo shares to industrial investors and nothing to the community? It doesn't really feel right. I mean, Fluyo has literally been built by this community and it's a pretty cool opportunity for you guys as well. I mean, imagine literally getting shares of Duolingo before they launched in 2011. I mean, it would be kind of crazy. And in addition to that, you know, as cool as Duolingo is, I think that we're onto something much better. So definitely fill out, oh, there you go. Fill out the form if you are interested. So all that being said, that brings me to the decision that I have to make for my YouTube channel, considering my bad health. I am inspired by what happened at Fluyo, how stepping aside brought new life to the team. And I thought perhaps I could do the same for my YouTube channel. Listen, I really love this community. I love the memories we've made and I oftentimes go back and rewatch my old videos and reread all of your comments and it makes my day every single time. Sometimes when I rewatch videos, it seems almost like a dream or me in a former life. And it hurts my soul to have this channel and the community that we've built stagnate and go nowhere. And for you guys to only hear from me every six months and usually not even about my language learning, but about my health. So I thought, unless something crazy happens, let this be my final health update video. 
I want to change things up. I want to bring on a co-host, essentially someone to take over making most of the content on my channel. An accomplished polyglot who is good behind the camera. Someone that can make videos in a very similar Ikena style that you guys know and love. Someone who can make videos that entertain you guys, that make you guys laugh, give you behind the scenes of Fluyo, perhaps could even dive back into VR chat or even surprising people uh, in real life on the street by speaking their language. And someone who could continue to help energize and build upon the community that we've built here. And most importantly, someone who can feature me every now and then in these videos because I don't have the strength to edit a whole video or to make videos by myself weekly, but I damn sure have the strength to make a small Obi-Wan Kenobi-esque <laughs> VR video like this or even just an audio message every other week and the new co-host could integrate these messages and these videos into the videos that they make. Therefore, you guys can actually see my face or my virtual face, you know, every other week or so, as opposed to every six months. Because you know what? Don't count me out just because I am better at enough. Because I've been secretly learning three languages that I am very excited to uh, show you guys and reveal to you guys. And I literally just started learning another one today on my birthday as a present to myself. Now, a co-host would be a big change. It would be a new Ikena, the last language bender-esque uh, moment, <laughs> but I'm convinced that it will be for the better. So for the new co-host, whoever you may be, here's the deal. If you become my co-host, we'd split any money from the channels 50-50. That means sponsorship deals, affiliate deals, course sales, ad revenue, etc. And for a channel that is my size, that's big. Once actively making content, channels my size can easily bring in five figures a month. Also, you would get an amazing platform to get the world to know about you and your amazing polyglot skills. There's a chance that you get a small bit of equity in Fluyo if you're really gung-ho about Fluyo. And lastly, you help a disabled person stay in touch with the audience that he cherishes so much, which is a very special thing. So if you are interested, definitely check out the link below in the description to apply. And if you know someone who might be interested, send this video to them. I would not be doing this if I were not this sick. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for the right person. This is a <laughs> type of moment. Everything that I cherish and built is here on this channel in one piece. And who knows, one day when I am better, perhaps I will take back the reins of the channel, but I do not know when that day will be.